Hello, I'm Greg. Welcome to my channel, Midnight Oil Software, and another game development tutorial. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to use Addressables and Unity's cloud content delivery service so that you can store your game data up in the cloud and only download it when you need it. So your initial installation can be very small and it can load very quickly and then you can download the data that you want as you need it. So I'm going to demonstrate this. I've got a little sample application here, a little prototype that I've whipped up. I'm going to go ahead and run that and it's going to come up pretty quickly to our start screen. And all you're going to see is just a basic background image, some text and a download game data button. Now, if I click this button, it's going out to the cloud and it's starting to download the game data, which is going to have a fully fledged scene using a really nice asset uh, that I downloaded from the Unity Asset Store. And I'll put a link to that in the description. But we'll go ahead and let this download and we'll run around the level a little bit. And there we go. So now I can run around here. I can jump. I can pan around and look. Um, and so this is a pretty nice environment here. And you can see it didn't take really all that long to download. I have a decent internet connection. Now, if I go ahead and exit out of here and go to my end screen scene, you see I'm going to have the option here to clear my download cache. Now, the only reason I have this here is because I want to show you what happens uh, if you've already downloaded your data and you exit the game and come back in. So if I come back in here again, you're going to see that it's going to go right to the level because it's already downloaded the game data. Now, if I go ahead and quit, but this time I clear my cache, run the game again. You see it comes back to the screen where it wants me to download the game data again. So, if that looks interesting to you and you want to learn how to do it, then just grab your favorite beverage, pull up a chair, and follow along as I teach you how to use addressables and cloud content delivery in Unity. So I'm going to show you this project I put together that we're going to add addressables to. Uh, right now I've got three scenes in it. I've got the loading scene, which is just basically a title screen. Um, I've got the level one scene, which has this multi-story dungeons asset pack. And I'll put a link to that asset pack in the description. Um, and finally, there's an end screen, uh, which basically just says thanks for playing. And you press click to end the game. I'm going to just run through this real quick. If I hit play, it'll come up and tell me to press any key to load the level. I click the mouse. It took me into the level. I hit escape. It takes me to the end screen. I quit. I click quit and it exits the game. Uh, one thing I did want to point out is when you create a new project, if you want to use any of the Unity services like cloud content delivery, you need to check this connect to Unity Cloud button in Unity Hub before you actually create your project. That will set up everything that you need um, in the Unity dashboard uh, for using their cloud services. Um, I have already pulled in from the Unity registry the addressables package and the CCD management packages. So you will need both of those packages installed if you want to use cloud content delivery. Once you've installed the addressables and CCD management packages, we can start setting up our addressables. You want to go up to window, asset management, addressables, and let's select profiles. And there is currently a default profile and there is local and remote in there, we're going to change remote to cloud content delivery. And we want to say automatic set using CCD manager. And we want to just go ahead and use the production environment. Next, if you go to asset management addressables groups, we're going to want to create a new group. So there's currently a default local group. I want to create a new group and I'm going to call it CCD. So I'm going to say blank. So up here on a new blank, no schema. I'm going to right click on that and say rename. And I'm going to call that CCD. 
and I'm going to right click on that and make that the default. And I'm just clicking off of it and onto it so I can make sure I see it in the inspector. Uh, and by the way, I've docked these windows up here uh, next to my game window so I can quickly go back to them. Uh, but in here, we're going to need to create a schema. So click add schema. And we want to use contact, content packing load underscore loading. And we're going to change this build and load paths from local to remote. And it's automatically putting in there what it needs to go out to our cloud content manager service out on the Unity Cloud. Um, I want to look at these settings and make sure that everything is good. There's different settings that you can play around with, like bundle mode. This is going to pack everything together. Um, CCD will cache things that you download, as I demonstrated at the beginning of this video. Um, but it will reload everything if anything changes. It's going to reload everything unless you do pack separately. So those settings all look good. I'm just going to leave everything like it is. Uh, the next thing we can do is actually create some addressables. So I'm going to go into our scenes folder. I'm going to click this level one scene and I'm going to make the whole scene an addressable. So you can see I've got this uh, addressable checkbox here in the inspector that you only get once you install the addressables package. So I'm going to click that and then it's already picking our default group, which is CCD. The other thing that I want to do is I want to add a label to it and I'm going to create a new label and I'm just going to call it level one and click save and then come over here and select that label. Now, Another thing you can do is look at this play mode script on your group and we want to tell it to use existing build. So make sure that use existing build for Windows is set. Now I'm going to tell it to build to CCD using the default build script. And so it gives us this addressables report. Uh, and it tells you the size of all our bundles. There's one addressable. It tells you how many assets were pulled into the build by that addressable. Okay, I've jumped over to our Unity dashboard and for our project, um, which is called Addressables and CCD, I went into the Cloud Content Delivery and into our Buckets tab here and you can see it's created a bucket called standalone windows 64 and it's created a badge called release one so if i go into this bucket you see here's our badge and you can see that it has created content for that bucket um, which is going to contain our level one scene jumping back into unity i've gone into our level one actually our loading scene and we're going to edit the script for this loading scene manager. So I'm going to just double click that to open it up in Rider. This was our basic script that all it did was when we clicked the mouse, it loaded that level one scene. So I pasted in an updated script now that's going to check to see if we have anything that we need to download. And if we do, we will download it and then we will switch over to that scene. So I had some serialized fields here I added. We'll look at those in the inspector in a minute. Uh, in start, I basically disable the progress bar and the download button. And then I start a coroutine to check our download status. And we're going to use the addressables.get download size async using this addressable label. That's going to tell us if we have anything to download. And if we do, then I'm going to display a little prompt here saying, welcome, click download to start. I'm going to enable the download button and then I am going to subscribe to the on click event. And if that is clicked, we're going to call a function called initiate download. Otherwise, I'm going to release that download size handle and I'm just going to start a coroutine to load the level that we've already downloaded. Uh, instantiate download is going to display something saying, hey, we're downloading level one. 
we're going to show the progress bar and we're going to start a coroutine that's actually going to download the game data. So that coroutine is going to use the addressables download dependencies async and for the same label. And we're going to subscribe to the completed event, which we'll call our on download complete function. And while we're not done, we're just going to continue to update our progress bar and we'll yield return every frame so we're not locking up the UI. When the download is finished and the complete event fires and calls our on download complete event, um, we're going to check and make sure it succeeded. If it did succeed, we're going to release that handle, set our progress bar all the way to one just to make sure it shows we've completed. We're going to display download complete in our status text and then we're going to start another coroutine to actually instantiate the level with a one second delay. And I'm going to explain that in a minute because when I was testing, I ran into an error that um, requires me to delay for some amount of time after the download is complete, but before I try and load the scene. Uh, if the download failed, I'm just going to display a message saying download failed and I'm going to turn off our progress bar. The instantiate level method is another coroutine. By default, the delay will be zero. So you remember, um, if we didn't have anything to download, uh, we just called instantiate level with no parameters. So it's not going to delay at all. We're just going to yield for one frame. And then we're going to call this addressables.load scene async. That's going to actually load that scene. And notice we're using the addressables load scene async and not the scene managers load scene. Um, so if we pass in a value for this delay, then we're going to wait for seconds delay here. And that's going to give us enough time to make sure the scene is actually ready to load after it's been downloaded. And then we're going to execute that same code load scene async. And assuming that download or I'm so, sorry, assuming that load scene succeeded, then we are going to actually just go to that scene, which is what load scene async does. But if it failed, we are going to set our status text to an error message indicating what the error was. So before I added the delay, I was displaying that there was an all reference exception um, somewhere trying to actually load that scene that's getting an all reference exception if I didn't give it some time after downloading it. Uh, the other thing I changed was our end screen uh, really quickly. Um, I'm displaying a toggle that will give you the option to clear the cache and I'm just doing that for testing purposes so I can show you what happens if you've already downloaded the game um, and then you run it again it won't make you download again but if you clear the cache and then run it it will make you download it again ordinarily you probably wouldn't want to clear your cache but I just wanted to be able to run this repeatedly and show you the different behaviors so let's go back out into the unity editor and we're going to do a build. We're going to do a clean build and I'm going to build it to this addressables and CCD folder. So we're going to go ahead and let that build out. And you can see it even generated another addressable report for us. Uh, but now we've got in our build folder here, our game that's been built out to a standalone windows build. If I run that, it's going to come up to our title screen and it's going to see that we have data we need to download. So I've enabled this download game data button. If I click that, we display our progress bar. We're downloading the data from cloud content delivery. And then after a one second delay, it loaded our scene and switched to it. So let's go ahead and quit the game, but don't clear the cache and run it again. And it went right into that scene because it's already downloaded it. Go ahead and quit, but clear the cache and run it again. And you can see it's making me download the data again. And so real quick, I'm going to go back into that end screen. And if the uh, toggle was set to clear the cache, I'm going to use this um, addressables.clear dependency cache async for our label. Um, so that's pretty much it.
If you found that useful, and I really hope you did, do me a favor and click that like and subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments about anything that I've shared in this video or any of my other videos, you can drop a comment below or better yet, go join my Discord server. I'll put a link in the description and you can post any detailed questions you have there and I'll be sure to get back to you or maybe one of the other members of the Discord server will see your question and reply to you as well. Thanks so much for watching and good luck on your game development journey.